والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of your show, Inspirations. We're still trying to build the foundations of Islam in ourselves as we are dealing with the great hadith of Jibreel. Uh, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Today, inshallah, is considered to be a sequel to the first episode about zakah. We will delve into zakah. We'll carry on with talking about how, is, how Islam frees the Islamic, or the Muslim soul or the person's soul from greed and from excessive love for wealth and for money and it opens the heart for more goodness and increases the person and increases the love the person has actually for other people uh, and other nations as well. Uh, other things we will see is, are the examples from how the Prophet وسلم, struck the best example in how to be a generous person and how to understand the reality of wealth and money and how to deal accordingly. Other beautiful examples will be from the companions. May Allah be pleased with them. They really, I mean, struck wonderful examples in generosity, in really having love for others, helping the poor and the needy, and showing uh, the mercy that every Muslim should have. And we have some other things as well to talk about, but before we go into that, let me remind you of our email address. Uh, keep sending us your emails uh, at inspirations at huda.tv and you can still walk, uh, visit our website which is www.buildingthefoundations.com Let me now welcome our guests. We have Brother Samah with us and we have uh, Yasser and Firuz and Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa Okay. We talked about zakah generally, in general, how Islam really encourages people to give in charity to care for the needy and the poor people and to feel their suffering and it reminds us that we all come from one person we're all the creation of Allah and we said that this wealth, this money belongs to Allah we only have it as a test it's only in our hands to serve some purposes, noble purposes it's not for us to serve money save it and spend our lives just trying to get as much money as possible then save it, then die and leave it behind us because we will be questioned about all of this uh, then we talked about how uh, the Prophet ﷺ was uh, very generous and he taught us this generosity. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala urged us in the Quran to give more and he uh, promised a multiple reward for those who spend in charity. And we all know the verse in Surah Al Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The example of people or the people who give in charity for the sake of Allah is like, you know, like the wheat. When the wheat grows, one grain will give seven, 700. Each grain will give 700. So it shows that when you give, you know, one dollar, one pound for the sake of Allah, you will get 700 times the same, or the same reward for that. More. Yes. So it just uh, opens, you know, the horizons of every person that don't be limited, don't let your insight be limited to the wealth that you have, that you possess. What Allah has is better. And every time Allah mentions the pleasures of this world, Allah says, Wallahu indahu husnul ma'aban, Allah has better than that. And Allah has greater reward. In order just to remind us of the reality of this world and this life. Now, uh, we will try to start with some of the examples. If you know any of the examples, any of the incidents or instances where the Prophet ﷺ gave for the sake of Allah, or how the companions gave. So that makes a good start for our show today. What did, can you recall anything? I remember Fools? once a companion came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, he presented him with, um, I think, a sweater or a shawl, something warm to wear, or a shirt. And another companion said he wants it from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, without asking, gave it to him. And the companions later scolded that other companion and said, you know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam needed that shirt or that shawl. Yet, the Prophet's generosity was such that even if he needed something, he'd give it away. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. So it just shows that the Prophet as one of the companions uh, described him, he said, he never said no to anything he was asked for. Every time they ask him for, we ask him for money, you ask him for clothes, you ask him for food, he would always give. He never said no in his life. Every time anyone asked him, he would give even 
this is a beautiful example as well that when it was given to him as a gift, you know, when, when someone gives you a gift, you're happy about it. You just want, you need this time to enjoy it, you know. But at that very moment when he got it, another another companion asked for it, so he straight away gave it to him. This is the kind of you know character that Islam wants us to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants us to be through Islam. Mm -hmm. So every time we read the Quran, we try to understand it and apply it. Inshallah, we'll get closer to that. Can you remind us of other examples? Yes, there is once a uh, guest came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked for <coughs> his nine houses. And he get answers, there is no food. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, who will take my guest today? So one of the companions, without even asking what's in his house, he said, I will take it, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I went to his house and his wife told him that all we food we have is just enough for the kids. So he told her, okay, just make them feel like you're preparing the food until they fall asleep. And then he they told her to put the light a little bit down and put the food in front of the guest. And he and his wife will pretend that they're eating while the guest will take all the food. Next day, when he went to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah was amazed and happy with what you've done yesterday. So subhanAllah, even they have limited food, even for them kids, you know, they sacrifice in a case, in a, in a sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, hostel the guest of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah, so it shows that how the companions of the Prophet were. Mm -hmm. And uh, this goes as well with what we said, just said about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He never said no. Even he didn't have anything to give. So he went to his companions to see anyone would entertain my guest. And... They even, you know, favored that guest over the, themselves and their children, and they gave the food to this guest who was actually he he basically uh, he was a man who came to the Prophet uh, He said, for you know many days I haven't had any food at all. He was starving, and he said, I haven't had food for so many days. I was trying to be patient, but I can't do it now. I can't do it anymore. I have to have food. So he came to the Prophet complaining about it as being the leader of that community at that time. So it just shows that these companions, they thought about it. Maybe somebody would say, or oh, let me put this kind of uh, you know, objection. Maybe someone would hear the story and say, okay, will they deprive their kids of the food and they gave it to that man? And this is this generosity. How would you reply to this? They depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, uh, for, 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 for living. For they, they had belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they had iman in their heart that they are depending on the one that if they have the pure intention for him, and if they ask him, he will give them what they need. Okay, so, so that's, what, that's, the one, that's one Allah reason. Yeah. What's another, another answer to this? You have just said it in the beginning of the program, when you said that whenever you give Allah, or whenever you give the poor something sick of Allah, Allah is going give to give it to you back, compensate you basically, with yeah. better than what you lost, or with better than yes. what you had given to Allah. So I believe maybe when they give the food to the companion, to the, the need with the poor, they... We believe in their hearts that they were expecting something better than what they lost in sake of Allah. So they believe that what they were doing is just like a kind of successful trade with Allah. These are good justifications. I just need to talk about the point. The kids, we give a guest and you leave your kids without food. Uh, SubhanAllah, uh, I think all of us are companion of Prophet Wasallam. We have in the aqeedah. That the benefit comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The food is only reason. And they believe if they give this reason to the guest, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, surely he will look after the kids and they will give them even better than the food. Okay, I'll still try. These are all that go, go around the same point. Nobody yeah. forced them, by the way, to do such no one, an definitely. action. But yeah. somebody might say, okay, they have kids. Well, he's a, he's a full-grown man, you know, fully-grown man. And the kids need food. Okay, it's, it's, in the, it's in the narration of the hadith, actually. The man came to the Prophet starving because he hadn't had food for a few days. And the kids, they had maybe food for that day. Maybe, maybe, just he was a guest. maybe he was a guest, from the, uh, guest of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the point? That's a, that's a good point. But the thing is, yes, his food, his kids, they had food for the day. Yeah, yes. okay. But this is their dinner. Uh -huh. But he hadn't food for so many days. Yes. So it still shows the solidarity. So this is what Islam wants us to be, to have this kind of solidarity. Among, not only among the Muslim society, among humanity as a whole. And this really brings us to some shocking statistics that I, I was looking at. I was really shocked 
totally shocked. Do you know that, uh, according to the uh, World Bank, it says that there are 500 million people in this world who live under what we call absolute poverty. Absolute poverty means no shelter, no food, no water, no safety or security. This is absolute poverty. Your basic needs are not satisfied, are not met at all. 500 million people in this world. This makes almost in like about 10% or around between 8 and 10% of the population of the earth. Imagine that. Whereas some people throw the, you know, the leftover of the food in the rubbish. So Islam doesn't tolerate this. Some people dying of hunger and some people throw the food in the garbage. This is Islamically not accepted at all. And do you know how many people die every year? You know, many people talk, talk about, especially some of the people who make a lot of money, and we don't uh, prevent people from having ex excessive money. If you use it correctly, that's wonderful, and that's good. And we, I think we, we dealt with that issue last time, last week when we dealt with it, alhamdulillah, was very good. And we explained the Islamic perspective on this, that if you have money, possess more money, and you use it for good uh, causes, this is better than being poor and being in need and asking people for help and for food and for shelter. Qarun is the best example for what you yes. just said now. We, we, I, will, I, will, uh, I will ask you to talk about Qarun as you brought this up, but let us try just to focus on the problem that the world faces today. Yes, yes. Many people, you know, they just waste their money on, uh, on luxuries, things they don't need. Many of them, they buy things, they just use it for one day, then they leave it for the rest of their lives. And they spend a lot of money. Whereas, every year, there, there are 15 million children who die of starvation. Die of hunger every year, 15 million children. Most of them are in the Indian subcontinent. And comes next, Africa. And third, comes South America. In these three continents, 15 million children every year die. And then some people talk about, you know, being uh, humane, care for humanity, care for the global unity, and all that stuff. What about these people? You spend excessive money, you waste it, you throw it in the garbage, and even, you know, the lost cats and dogs that wander, you know, in the wilderness, they've become so obese because they eat of this food in the garbage. Whereas human beings are dying, kids, children, who haven't reached the age of 15 years old, they die, 15 million children die every year. I read that in the European Union, yes. every cow earns two dollars a day. <laughs> and most people in the rest of the world don't even earn a dollar a day because the European Union subsidizes its farm so much that every cow earns two dollars a day. Wow, that's great. <laughs> that's <laughs> profound. That's really profound. I think that is the importance of zakah. And Islam, subhanAllah, make it one of the pillars, you know. Yes, Allah one of the pillars of Islam. Yeah, one of the pillars. So this is why we're bringing these statistics, just to say to the world, you know, those you know, uh, human rights activists, you try, you always try to say, okay, our brethren in humanity, our brothers and sisters in humanity, people in Africa, people in Southeast Asia and Indian subcontinent, people in the poor countries, they suffer from illnesses, from diseases, and from uh, starvation. We have to help them. No matter how much you try, there is a lot of greed in the world today that governs politics everywhere. So you can't get that. If you really want to achieve your goals, come and look into Islam. Look into the system of zakah, how it deals with it. Now this is a reality. You know the money that the, the governments, especially in the West uh, and the advanced countries, the money they spend on military purposes is so huge, it's unbelievable. You know, the, with the, what a rocket or what a, let's say a missile, what a missile, the, the money that you need to make a missile, one missile, you know, is enough to feed a school in any, of, any country of the third world for five years. The kids every day have lunch. For five years, this equals the same money they spend on making one missile. Imagine the military or the military spending expenditure that we find in the advanced countries. And then we, t we talk about you know, bringing freedom to the world. 
going to Afghanistan, going to Iraq, bring freedom to these people. We kill them and we bring them freedom. Yes, you freed them from this world, <laughs> but you didn't really free them. There are other ulterior, uh, ulterior motives. Brother, that's, what, that's why I say they, they, they lost the aim of life. They don't have the aim of life that we have in Islam, that we will be accountable for every action that we do in this yeah. life. And we will get back to the owner of all the things. And he will ask us for the money that we have spent, like uh, yeah. the, the last episode where we were talking about, yeah. the money that we, how it came and how we spend it, stuff like that. And subhanAllah, yani, they, they don't just understand. Muslims sometimes, non-practicing Muslims sometimes do what, 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 what you're saying here. They don't understand that zakah is like a tree. If you cut its branches, it will grow. It, 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 it will stimulate it to grow. Yes. Exam, exactly like plants and, and, and trees, if you got small branches of it, it just will grow more. That's, that's, that's why we're talking about Islam yeah. as being, the zakah as being a pillar in Islam. Islam is being established on these five pillars. We didn't say, the Prophet Muhammad did not say Islam is formed of five, Islam is established upon these five pillars. Yes, yes, that's a, that's a wonderful really uh, kind of uh, conclusion you take from the hadith that Islam is based on these. Islam is based on these. So these are the pillars of Islam and they will give fruits. But you have to establish them, then you will see the fruits of Islam. You will see the magnificent or beautiful system, great system of Islam after you establish these. And the more you establish of them, the more you achieve of them, the more goodness that you will see. So this is why it's a call. And now really from here, I call all human activists who see us and who are interested in human rights. Maybe you try, you spend your whole life trying to bring uh, rights to the people who deserve that, people who are in need, uh, the poor people, the people who are, live in starvation and in bank, bad conditions and in poverty. You will try, but there are people who have the opposite kind of objectives. And the only way to bring freedom to people and to bring affluence, I don't say even affluence, just bring them dignity, bring them their rights to eat and to live with dignity. The only way is to come back to the system of Islam. Study it, go into it and see how beautiful it is. And don't listen to the propaganda, the stereotypes that try to deter you away from Islam because they know that Islam will make everyone equal on this earth. We're not talking just about the Muslim world, we're talking about all human beings everywhere. They have the right to dignity to be dignified, they have the right to food, to drink, to shelter, to live as human beings, not to be considered as animals. Even the animals in the West, the dogs and all the rest of the pets, they eat more than the people in the third world. Why do we spend all that money on the military purposes and that, that, that is only incited by greed to dominate, to control other countries, to control their resources and confiscate them? And when we talk, we talk about freedom, we talk about liberty, we talk about liberating the, the, the masses, liberating the people from their rulers and all that stuff, but then we subjugate them, we humiliate them, and what do we do? We leave the rest of the world, 500, peop 500 million people live in absolute poverty. We'll go more into this, we'll try to see how zakah has the potential to deal with all this problem, solve it from the roots. So we go, we all, once we you know, affirm the foundations, the roots, we'll get the right fruits, inshallah. So let's go now to a short break, and I say to all viewers, stay tuned, we're coming back soon. Welcome to this new episode of Focus Point. The new generation is, has the good, the habit of reading more than before. The Jewish question was named basically the problem of Jews who lost their function in society. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're still watching Inspirations. We're talking about, still talking about zakan. We said that Islam, as many times, we repeatedly said that Islam has the potential. Islam is the only way for humanity out of all the calamities they brought themselves into, like poverty, oppression, 
even the political, political problems, all of them can be sorted out easily with Islam. And we're taking today zakah as an example. And we uh, mentioned some of the facts and statistics that really shock everyone. How do we live in the world like this? And we talk about being human, talking about helping others, talking about freedom, talking about promoting you know, democracy. When uh, so many people are dying of hunger, and we're enjoying you know, the luxuries. And we, we're killing people for these luxuries as well. So, as we said, this is, Islam does not tolerate this. Islam is totally against it. This is why we have the great system of zakah in al-Islam. Now, this is the reality of the world we live in today. Now, let's see how was, uh, when zakah was applied. When zakah was applied, how was the world like? How did it look like? How were the people like? Because zakah itself, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَحِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا Take from their wealth some charity, some, you know, some portion that they give for the sake of Allah, with which you purify them. You purify them, you purify their money, you purify their souls. So when you give zakah, when you get into the system and you become part of it, your heart will grow, goodness in your heart will grow. You will start to feel the suffering of the needy, of the poor of the deprived, of the less fortunate. You'll feel with them and you try to help them. This is why everything in Islam is designed to bring people together, to make them grow spiritually, mentally, physically, economically, in all aspects, in all walks of life. So this is why zakah has been prescribed. Some people may, you know, like, maybe complain about it. They say it's like tax, it's like tax. Can you tell me what's the difference between zakah and tax? I think tax, it touches only the income. Of the person, but zakah it touch the income as well as the wealth of the of the. That's one difference. I yes. think I think I think zakah you will get rewarded for it, while tax you will not get rewarded for it. Never. <laughs> 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 Maybe if you get poor, they will give you the welfare or the benefits through the benefit system. Uh, the tax might be not fair, taking high portion from the income of the person. Very good. Sometimes yeah. the tax, income tax, gets in some countries to up to. F you know, 40%. Mm. Yes. The, well, I think the least amount is about 25%, from 20 to 25% yes. of your wages. Mm. But whereas zakah is only 2.5%, like the, like the wealth has money, but like the crops and camels and sheep and all that, they have different kind of, different portions or proportions. Mm. But zakah takes only 25 of your surplus money. And you have to have it for a whole year as well. So it means, you know, this is part of the economical system in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the money, guided us to make the money. Why? In order that, because Allah put us in this earth first, to worship Him and to what? To build this earth, to achieve advancement, technology, all of this is wanted in Islam. And Allah said that He created us, or He sent us to the earth so that we build it, so that we construct it, we bring life to it. So how do we make buildings, construction, advancement? We need money. Money has to be circulated. It shouldn't be saved, it shouldn't be hoarded. It has to be among the people. This is how, and this is actually one of the parameters with which we can measure a country's economical advancement and progress. Yes. That the wealth you know, is running, is in circulation. People use it, buy it. This is how a country grows economically. But if we start saving the money, the economy will go down. Everything in life will go down. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, one of the reasons, or one of the wisdoms behind zakah, So the money does not become in possession, in the possession of only the wealthy, the minority among you who have wealth and affluence. So they hold it and they save it and it doesn't go to the market. People don't use it, people don't benefit from it. Yes. This is a destructive thing in, in any society. Yes. Now, this leads us to some of the statistics actually, yes. that are uh, actually the CIA itself, they themselves publish these statistics. And like in Nigeria, you know, 10% of the population possess from 60 to 70% of the wealth of the country. Yes. Imagine 10% have 60 to 70 percent of the wealth of the country, what about the rest of them? The 90 percent, they only possess 30 30 percent of the wealth. Yes. And what about maybe foreigners as well have another portion? Yeah. So what does it mean? 
People live in absolute poverty, a big gap between the rich and the poor. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I sat with someone who worked for the Ministry of Statistics in a Muslim country. In a Muslim country. That is considered to be among the, uh, who have the, uh, among the countries that have very good economy that is growing, rapidly growing. And he said to me that they made a research, and he was in charge of that research. And he said, 4% four, four of the population have about 80% of the wealth of that country that they live in. Imagine, 4% have 80% of the wealth. That's amazing. This is why some people live in absolute poverty, while some people are spending their money squandering it here and there on silly things. Now Islam does not tolerate this. This is why we have crime. Those who are less fortunate, they will see the people enjoying their wealth, and when you have more wealth, it's easier for you to make more money. But it's very hard to get yourself from poverty into affluence or into uh, you know, richness. So the wealthy are getting wealthier, and the poor are getting poorer. So crime increases, uh, all types of immorality increases because the rich will, 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 how, will abuse the poor. They can buy them with that wealth. So Islam will always try to avoid this. Now we talked about the world, how we live today. And you know, many, many countries, if they want to find out why the crimes are there, so they have to review their economical system. The ratio of poor and rich. And these shocking statistics, even in some of the developed countries, I would like to uh, quote some other, like in India, you know, 10% possess between 25 and 30% of the wealth in that country. You know, India is a very big country. It's a massive country. They are coming to a billion human people, the population. There's, there's a lot of money there, but only a minority of the people control all this economy. Whereas the majority of them live in absolute poverty. They don't have even food to eat. Many of them live in the streets and sleep in the streets. They don't have health care at all. Why is this? Islam does not tolerate this. And we still remind the people, well, let's see what Islam does. Now let's go back to the Muslim society, the early generations of the Muslim society. See and compare. Let's compare what we live in today with what they had. Now so one of, some of the things that were mentioned and history that, uh, that you see after you establish zakah from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi until about a hundred years later where Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was the Khalifa, was the Caliph of the Muslims. You know, his people who work to collect the zakah and distribute it, give it to the, those who deserve it. They went out with the zakah and no one took it. Because no one was eligible to take the zakah. And zakah is not only given to the poor, so it means people are above the poverty line. That's all the people are above poverty line. Muslims, non-Muslims, the Arabs and the non-Arabs, the citizens of these countries and the foreigners, all of them were above the poverty line. This is something that I don't think the world could achieve today yes. with the system that is going on. Mm. What else as well? So they want to give. As we said, the money is not only given to the poor. It's given to the people who have a lot of debts. It's given to the travelers. But all of these, they have plenty of money. And they want to get married. So you can take the money as well from the government? Well, this is a certain, yeah. certain conditions. There are certain conditions, certain situations yes. where when there is excess, excess money of zakah and there's no one to take it, like at the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. So you see what they are the results of applying zakah? So we call the world now, if you really want to get rid of poverty, if you are sincere in that, come and review the system of zakah and see how it is. You don't have to take 40% of people's incomes, wages. Of the surplus money that they keep for one year, just take 2.5%. It's very simple. They don't, we, it's, it's, zakah is not taken from your food, it's not taken from your clothes, it's not taken from your house, it's not taken from like you, the property that you use yes. every day. Cars, it's not taken, horses, it's not taken, no, it's not taken, it's not taken yes. from that. Yeah. Only your surplus money. So it's yeah. amazing. System In England, they, uh, till about, I think, 100 years ago, they had a window tax, where as many windows as you had in your house, they tax you for it. <laughs> so uh, y y you don't need to go yeah, to so those extremes. They tax your house. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, have to, you can block all the windows so you don't pay any tax. <laughs> Okay. You know so do, can you tell? Can you remind us, sorry, about anything at the time of the Prophet, uh, his companions, to see, just to compare our situation today, the situation of humanity today, and the situation of 
humanity at that time. Maybe before you leave this point, I think you, you, because you have just mentioned now about the 40 percent, I believe that because you know the system of the tax, how they use it, they waste much money because the zakat system, the money goes to poor, to who needs the money basically. Yeah, but the tax system it goes to it, we take money from the rich people, and then most of the time the money goes back to them themselves. But they don't need it. Re they don't need it really, because like you know. You know, making like you know some. I don't really want to speak about details, but I see that everyone get the same, get the the money which the benefits which we get from the tax. Let's say, maybe if I'm rich and I pay the tax, then in a way the money comes back to me as well. So what about how the does poor? the money come back to to because the rich? I tell you, uh, in the zakat system, let's say if I'm rich uh, and I pay the zakat, the zakat that amount of money is saved. To who needs it? Yes. Like, let's say someone. Yeah, but who you said in the benefit system or the welfare system, mm. uh, like in the Western social systems, the rich pay the tax, but it comes back to them. How does it come back to them? Well, as far as I know, it goes to the poor, really, or those who need it, or yeah. those who apply for it. Mainly yeah. those who need it. So, how yeah. does it go to the rich? Uh, we have to be as well. You know, sometimes uh, we're not talking about exceptions like people trying to abuse the system. Yeah. We have to be fair. You know, these systems, actually, the welfare system, the benefit system. Uh, generally are good because they take money from the people who have but we don't say, we're not talking Islamically just let's say generally uh, the principle is good to take money from the, those who have excessive money yeah. give it to those who need it I know that the system is abused most of the time a lot of people who don't need it take it they use it for drugs they use it for other things yeah. but we're just talking about the system not the way it's being abused yes. but uh, just to before We'll carry on. I, I actually plan to talk about this later on, which is all these systems are taken from Islam. Exactly. They were there 1,400 years ago. Yeah. They were there 400 years. But I want, Sam, you had a point you wanted. Yeah, I want to highlight a specific thing um, here. The reason why Muslims became prosperous at the time of the caliphs of the Muslims, because they feared Allah. All of them feared Allah. They gave out the zakah, not by force, not... Everyone is knocking at their door, hey, it's zakat time here. No, they give it because they, they had fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they, they had a clear heart inside themselves. Uh, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz himself was talking to one of his friends at night, talking about the national affairs, talking about... And then after he finished talking, he, uh, sh uh, he, 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 he closed the lantern. So his friend asked him, why have you closed the lantern? He told... We were talking about things that are related to our country, our Muslim nation. Now we are beginning to talk about things that are between me and you. It's time to close this because this is a part of the Muslim money. So, so it shows that Umar al-Khattab was so concerned for the people's money. Mm. It's the money of zakah, we can't use it. The money of, Islam, of, the, of the people, we can't use it for our own self-purposes or personal yeah, but purposes. Who, yeah, and, but who pays the tax? Everyone has to pay the tax. Even yes. the people which they need that money. Let's yeah, say for example, yeah, let's say if I have you. a family, I yeah, yeah. if I have a family, and then you ask me to pay 30% or 40% sometimes from my wage. Let's say I have a big family, let's say some of my family members need health care, needs this, need that, and then end of the day I find you take, you know, a big chunk of my money. Yes, that's right. You know, yeah, it could be, ab you know, it could be abusing for me. Maybe someone else could be able to do it, would maybe would be able to pay that amount of money, no problem for him. But you are doing this with everyone. But the zakat system is much different. First of, of, course, all, of course, yeah, first of all, I have to reach, you know, a limit. My money, the amount of my money has to reach a limit. So after that, um, uh, that level or that limit, I start be, like, I'll be entitled of paying zakat. Yeah, the you zakat have to have system, it for one year as well. Yeah, this you, something you didn't else. do anything with it. Yeah, but the first, the first point, I have to be rich. My money yes. has to cover, first of all, has to cover all my needs, my family members, my, our health care, our food, everything, yeah? Then after it covers all these expenses, now that amount of money which left over has to, to uh, have to keep it in whatever my bank or whatever, for, in my position for the whole year. Yes. Whenever I need that money in that whole year, the Zika system in a year, is not implemented upon me. Yeah. Why? Because I needed that money. But when we come to the first, you know, system, which like most of the countries basically use it, they 
take the tax from everyone, that's even true. the people who they need that money. That is true, that's so true. Because sometimes the, the, the defining the poverty say. line is not really clear, because sometimes, like in the UK, uh, I think it's about 4,000, 4,500 a year. Above this, they start taking tax or deducting tax from your wages. But, you know, in London, when you earn 4,000, 4,500, you can't even pay your rent. You can, so even if you get a studio or a small room, you can't even pay that rent. So... Yeah, so still, you know, it goes back to the way the system is applied. But what I said, or, the origin of the, these systems has been taken from Islam. And it's good that Samah mentioned Amr ibn Khattab, because uh, there's a beautiful story about Amr ibn Khattab. It just shows that when we implement the zakah system, when we apply Islam as a whole, uh, the, you know, the whole of humanity will live a wonderful life. A wonderful life, peaceful, with dignity, no need for being a thief. No need for stealing, no need for oppression. On the contrary, your right will come to your doorstep. You don't have even to chase it. We'll talk about this, inshallah, after we take a short break. And we'll say to our viewers, stay with us. We're coming back soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're still watching Inspirations. Please keep sending us your emails. Uh, many times I reminded you of the email address. But again, inspirations at huda.tv. Especially about these topics that we are talking about. Now, uh, we gave one example about uh, how the people lived at that time when they applied the system of zakah. Another thing, just as we are talking about the benefit system or the welfare system, uh, Umar ibn Khattab one day was... Uh, he heard a child crying during the night. Then he asked, inquired about it, and he found out that the mother wanted to stop suckling or feeding uh, the baby, breastfeeding the baby. Why? Because Umar ibn Khattab gave a, a salary, a monthly salary to every kid who uh, stopped you know, breastfeeding. So, because why? At that time, they start having food. So the family has to bring food for them. Every Muslim had a monthly salary that was given to him or her. Everyone. So, when he inquired about this, and he found out the reason, he said, don't torture the child. Then he changed the, uh, the system, and he said, every Muslim, when, once he's born, he will get his monthly salary. Oh. Could you imagine this? Not even in, the, in the Western world, I don't think you still get that, anyway. But it just shows that even these systems in the West, they came from Islam, they were there already. That, we're talking about about 1400 years ago. That was the system in the Muslim world. So it just shows once you establish Islam, the wealth will be there for everyone. And as we said, the rich, when they give the zakah, what will happen? Allah will bring, give them more. Allah will put more blessings in the wealth. And the poor who can't get the wealth, what will happen to them? They still have their needs satisfied. And so it just shows that Islam is not a, it just runs the people, wants to free the people from wasting their lives just to get food and drink and waste their lives about this or making money no but it uh, diverts their attention to the good issues the high issues the things that will always bring greatness to the self and to the society as a whole so uh, do you still recall any 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 incidents from the early generations how zakah made a very beautiful system for them to live in like, you know, I remember one of the things during the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, it just shows because this testifies to the verse in Surah, uh, in one of the, in, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس in Surah Al-Rum, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس you know, corruption, destruction has appeared on the land and in the sea why? because of the evil doings of mankind you know, when you sin the sin has its impact on the trees, on the earth, even on the air itself that you breathe. It has its own effect. And Allah promised to make this clear for mankind. So at the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, because the Islamic system has been established for about a hundred years now, and it's been in effect for this long period, you know they said the grain of wheat was like the same size as the stone of the dates. The stone of a date is just about like this. It's very big. No genetics here. No genetic engineering here. <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. Yeah. It's just it's real blessings from the Creator. Exactly. So once everything follows Islam, because Islam is the, you know, we said 
previously, long ago, in this show, that you know, Islam is the religion of everything. Islam means submission. The whole world is submitting to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once you get into Islam and apply it on yourself, you become part of this unity, part of this global harmony, universal harmony that the whole universe is going according to, if you go into Islam. So everything will be on your side. Everything will be pushing you forward. This is how Islam shows us. Um, because on the flip side, as you've mentioned before, if you don't implement uh, uh, something, uh, a system of justice, it, it is a system of oppression. And they say, whoever doesn't learn from history is condemned to repeat it. If you look in the past generations, whether it was uh, the Babylonians of very long ago, yeah. until uh, very recent history, it's always been the fact that the poor are the ones who revolt. Up to the French Revolution, yeah. they're the ones who are poor, and uh, they're, they're human beings. They're not going to just sit still and think, oh, my, my brother has got a billion and I have nothing, I'll be happy for him. Mm -hmm. the, when they become oppressed, they will fight against it. Or if another nation attacks them, the poor have nothing to fight for. They think to themselves, what's the state given me anyway? And when they're attacked, only the rich will try to defend it, and that state is always bound to fail. No loyalty. Throughout history, yeah. uh, whenever a civilization has become high, the only reason why they've come down is because of economic reasons. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's very shocking. It's very shocking. And so I, I, I open it as well, so. that when we read history, we try to take the lessons, and it, it really does. So this... This leads us to talk about what, what are the effects of zakah on the community? Love, how does it bring love? The first thing he has just said now about loyalty, about uh, how uh, the system of zakah uh, make uh, you know, the poor, you know, people of the community and the rich people come to a point, come together. Because obviously the poor people appreciate what the rich people do. And the rich people, when they do this, obviously like, you know, I remember my mom gave an example one day, said, if you feed a cat, the cat will love you, and you will love the cat itself. You will feel attached to the cat because you have been uh, feeding the cat for a long period of time. So let's say if a rich person, he gives the poor, and he see the smile of the poor person in front of him, he feels attached to that poor person. So if he starts feeling love in his heart to that poor, and on the other hand, we see that poor, he appreciates what the rich person has just given to him. So we bring them to a point where... Uh, bring them to love. So I believe that in a time of war or something, they will support each other strongly, you know, mm -hmm. shoulder to shoulder. Yes. So one of the benefits of the Zakat system that to bring the love. solidarity, mutual love. Yeah, and unite mm -hmm. them. And that's it. So uh, what else? Yes, is the zakat, uh, yes, so yes sure. something to do with that. Uh, you know, because the Zakat is purified the soul of the poor person from the envy and the hatred against the rich person uh, um, and at the same yeah, time bring the mercy into the heart because to help you have to have a mercy the heart of the rich person and and, and the people who got a mercy in them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be mercy Allah mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu yes, wa ta'ala yes. and so, with the zakah yeah. it's build good and integrated society as possible mm -hmm. you know? so with it's actually for our own benefit not even we give from our own money but the rewards are greater in this world, even before the next. Yeah. Samah? You know, one statement, zakah equal universal brotherhood between Muslims. That's a very good uh, conclusion. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> yeah, we can come up with this from today's <laughs> episode with, yes, universal brotherhood. Zakah means universal brotherhood. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you something, look. In, in the West, you know, they have, like, you know, some benefits of the systems there about the welfare, which have been taken from zakah as well, obviously, yeah. As we see and the history, look at the history, 1400 years ago, obviously, you know, far, uh, you know, before previous, you know, that new systems at the moment in our new d recent days. Uh, the main, one of the main points which we can see in their system that why they give the poor, what they, why they give the people which are looking for jobs to support them so they can still, you know, they can help in the community a little bit, like, you know, something to keep them on their feet till they find their jobs, till they can rely on themselves. Yes. And they start, you know, being helpful and, like, they cooperate in the community. So basically when we help the poor, you know, we strengthen them to keep them, you know, strong till they catch, you know, up and till they come back to our society working and doing uh, help. So at end of the day, it helped the community itself and helped the country or, you know, like, you know, the, the place wherever applied that zakat system. Yes, yes, that's true. That's true. And uh, economically speaking, you know, uh, this 2.5% is a lot of money. 
still a lot of money. Exactly. But it doesn't affect the person himself who's giving it. It's, it's a very small effect. But as we said, the Prophet ﷺ promised that money will not go, the value of it will not go down, or money itself will not go down when you pay. Allah will give you more. But imagine that this 2.5% will be in billions in, in any of the huge countries, big countries. Imagine if it were just locked. Would, would be of no use. But when you give it in zakat, it's in the market. So it gives a boom, it gives a, it gives a boost it's actually to money. the whole, yeah, to the whole society. But uh, you're not going back as well to the mutual love. So do you see, how do you see zakat with this mutual love uh, rids the society of crime? How do you see this happens with zakat? Obviously, if, if now a poor person sees a rich person give him from his money and look after him, so why are you going to attack him? Why is he going to steal yes. his car yes. or steal to break down yeah, his wife? It just leads us to the reason. What is the reason behind crime? You either want to eat and feed your family. Yes. Or what? Um, hatred towards, hatred towards, towards the rich higher. Because they abuse the country, yeah. they abuse everything. Yeah. And you have everything in their hands, you have nothing. So it just, you know, it's it, it outroots the whole problem of crime. You see how when some people talk about Islam, they try to, try to criticize Islam, we say to them, take Islam as a whole, don't take things out of context, see how it works. So there are other things as well when we talk about the, some of the punishments in Islam, they say it's very brutal, it's very hard, it's very harsh. We say to them, look at Islam sorted out the problem. Like when you steal and you do this and that, you don't have to do it, Islam has saved you from that. So no one really falls in these crimes except someone, a lunatic maybe, someone who has a real mental problem on whom the punishments will not be applied anyway. So let's try to come up with some conclusions. What do you advise people now, as we talked about zakah, what do you, what's your advice to people? My, my first advice to... Any least try to please to make it brief, we're running out of time. Okay, M my first advice, or the most important advice, just you know, to review the zakah system, because when yes. they make comparison between the zakah, when we make comparison between the zakah system and any other system, we we'll find that one of the main points, people which they are entitled of paying tax, which most of the people of the country anyway, I mean in the other systems, they are most of the time they are disappointed a little bit about paying that tax, because sometimes they are entitled of the money itself. They need that money which they pay, yes. but in zakah time. Most of the time, we don't, or maybe all the time, okay. I'm not, I don't find any hatred in my heart because I'm rich really, you know, I don't need that money up okay. to the, the zakat system. Okay, just let's try to sum up, uh, just give us a very adv uh, practical advice to our viewers who see us today in the system that we live in today. Very briefly, if we only have even less than one minute. Okay. Just I, think because, uh, I, don't think, I don't think you should wait until you're destitute to know that people out there need money. Uh, I was a victim of a war zone and I had to go out into the middle of the desert. Big families, if people ha weren't paying us charity, weren't feeding us every day, we would have died. I don't think you should think to yourself, if it happens to me, then I'll give. You should know that there are people out there who need it. Don't wait for it to happen to you. Spend the money. For okay. Yes, sir. I want to say Very quickly. Yes. You know, yes. Prophet Muhammad said, the charity wipes or distinguish the, 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 the sin like the, the water distinguishes the fire. Very good. Yeah. Advice to Muslims, you are dealing and trading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Advice for non-Muslims, read about zakah. Very good, excellent. Okay, so let's conclude with uh, Zakat is a wonderful system. Muslims and non-Muslims should really look into it and just see the beauty of it so they will understand the beautiful system of Islam. I leave all of you with the advice. If you haven't paid your Zakat, go and check. Maybe you will have to pay Zakat actually, but you don't know about this. So let's find out about, find out about it. Go to a scholar in your locality that you... Uh, that you trust or someone you can contact and then you trust their knowledge they will tell you about your zakah give it and my advice go and give it personally see how when you bring happiness to the needy especially to the children how much happiness you will have in your heart and you will realize that happiness actually lies in giving not in taking now I leave you in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until we meet next time Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh